For the past few years, I've been a collector of stories, uh, mostly a collector of stories about faith or belief or the lack of belief. This began really with my first book, Killing the Buddha, which I wrote with my friend Jeff Charlotte, uh, in, in which we traveled the country for a year gathering stories of people who believe and don't believe and the great varieties of things people believe and don't believe. And I followed that up with going back to my own family history and um, collecting the stories that I heard growing up about my father's life as a Catholic priest and how he met my mother, the Catholic nun, and, and what happened after that. But really, I, I've been realizing um, since I wrote this recent book, Songs to the Butcher's Daughter, that this collecting of stories really started for me in the few years right after college when I got a job as a Yiddish book collector. Um, Catholic guy from Boston, I, I nonetheless got a job for the Jewish Cultural Organization. And my work for about three years was just driving a truck up and down the East Coast, meeting people, picking up their used and unwanted books, and in the process, learning their stories. Because of this experience of learning their stories, I, I wanted to find a way to write about it in a way that would convey not just my own feeling of gratitude for having heard them, but really what they experienced. And so that's how I came to write this novel. I wanted to convey the experience of what it's like to be someone who's, uh, who has outlived your language, basically. What it's like to watch the words that you learn first from your father and mother, to watch those words fade away. I was ever hopeful that I would learn their trade well enough to leave the garment shop behind. When it came time to write this book, the, the book that I always knew I wanted to write about Yiddish, I had to decide how to do it. Did I want to write a non-fiction book about my experiences as a Catholic learning Yiddish? Or did I want to find a way to get inside of the story, to um, present not just my own interest in the language and the, and the literature and the people who made it, but a way of showing the power of it, what it really meant to me. And so fiction was the natural choice. It just let me get inside the, the life of a particular person. Um, Itzik Malfish, my character, my last Yiddish poet in America. And it let me tell um, the history of the 20th century as, as he experienced it with, through his eyes and not just um, my own nonfiction interpretation of the life of, of an actual living poet. In the beginning, I received no pay for my time among the typesetters. Content to watch them transform text into freshly minted lead slugs. To me, it's a heartbreaking story, uh, but it's also one um, that's hopeful in a way that we can, is, as important as language is to us, that we can um, transcend it somehow. We can find new ways of communicating with each other, even as we lament the, the loss of the, the ways we've known.